so today we'll see how to insert a shape using the macros so yesterday we learned how to hide and unhide it so that was quite simple so i told it in the beginning so today i'll just give you a brief like how to write a macro to add a shape so i'm going to add Vidya, a can you record this session i am re i am recording anil okay so thank you So we will insert a module first. So I'll again rename it to SHP shape module. I'll just give this name. So we'll begin this with macro to insert a shape. Even before you insert a shape, you should know which shape you're adding and uh, to know the name of it so you just go to insert over here okay take shapes you'll see a list of shapes displaying so you just hover the mouse on those shapes so you'll be able to see the name of those shapes so whichever shape you want to add just uh, remember the name of that and you can use the same in the code as well I'll show you how to use it. So go back to the macro. I'll begin like this. So add shape. So on which sheet you are adding, you have to mention that. So it is sheet one. So the class name is shapes now. It's not range. We are dealing with shapes. So you'll get this and say add shape. So you have a lot of other things text effects, smart art and those things. We are trying to add a shape. So I'll choose add shape. So which shape you want to add, you're going to give a space or use a bracket. So don't use brackets unless and until you are uh, using this as an input to something else. So I was explaining this to you while using message box and input box. So unless and until the function is an input to something else. So you are not going to use brackets. So I'll give a space. You can see a list of shape names over here. So from this, you have to choose which shape you want to include. So I want to give a MSO shape. I want to include a rectangle, let's say. I want to insert a rectangle shape. So the next parameter for this add shape function is so once you choose the shape you should provide the position left and top are the positions on the sheet where do you want to insert it so from the left side of the sheet what should be the distance from the top of the sheet what should be the distance you will have to mention that so i'll give a uh, 10 and let's say 25 from top and you will have to mention the width and height of the object that you are inserting. I'll give the width as 200 and height as 200 again. I want to insert a shape like this. So let me run this. Okay. So let me just change this dimension. Just give me a second, guys. The rectangle, the spelling is wrong. It's always better to choose from that dog, you know, drop down for these kind of errors. Yes, now it is inserted. See, so you can see a rectangle is added. So, for this rectangle, if I have to rename it, if I have to name the shape, Again, I'll have to select it first and then I have to change the name. So there are two ways. Either you can change the name of an inserted shape. So I'll do that first. While adding itself, you can rename it. I'll show that again. See, currently the name of the shape is rectangle one. I'll just copy it from the name box over here. I'll copy that and say rename shape. I'm going to write another macro to rename it. 
macro to rename shape sub rename shape so over here so you will give the current name of that shape so i'll use shapes class and see within this you will have to provide the existing name of that shape and just give name property and say what name you want to provide to it you can use that name so i can say i want to give blue box so that that's the name that i want to give to that particular shape this hp blue box so now if i run this you can check by selecting that shape the name would have changed you can check it in the name box over here See, I can show it to you. It, it is over here. Are you all able to see this? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So, yes, Sandeep, MSO is in Microsoft. So, you can ask the queries once I, uh, uh, you know, intimate uh, all of you to ask the questions so let's not interrupt the class in between is it clear to you uh, okay 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 right. I'll, I'll give uh, time for you to ask questions so you can ask me so let, let's see how to give a name to a shape right or uh, right at the time of adding it over here and say sub add shape and name of it together see we are going to use the same thing in the next program so over here i'll, I'll just have to mention see sheet one shapes and say add shape and you are going to use brackets over here i'll tell you why because we are going to change the property of this shape immediately at the point of insertion itself. So I'll use the same shape, MSO rectangle, MSO shape rectangle. Yes. So you can choose that from the list to avoid spelling mistakes. And here I'm going to give the uh, let's say I'll give a different shape here. I will just uh, give it a little far away. I'll say from left should be 40 and from top let it be 25. And the width I would like to give 400 and height I would like to give just 50. And I want to name the shape. So I'll give name property right after this and you can say within double quotes specify the name that you want to give to that shape. Just say SHP and whatever name that you want to provide. SHP new box etc. And I run this. So you can check on top of the same rectangle i have another rectangle over here let me change the color of this uh, for you so that you will um, you know understand it i'll just make it yellow Are you able to see it now? And when you select the shape, you will see the name of the shape over here in the name box. So is it clear to you? Or you can ask questions now if you have any. Uh, the name will not be visible, is it? I mean, we can only see that in uh, the icon uh, where it says uh, where, where you have named that small box towards the left. See so that is where visible in the Excel. 
no see when you select the box or when you select the shape only then you will be able to see the name of the shape over here okay okay thank you and you can re uh, here if if i have to write anything in this box i can write uh, we can do that just the way in excel right so yes you let's can say yes, i want you can. this uh, just type abc in that uh, uh, blue i mean rather say uh, orange box and so that you know it's visible if i have to okay. See, Sandeep, uh, don't get confused with the text that is displayed on the shape and the name of the shape. Both are different. Oh, okay, different, different. So I, I'm just asking. I can add the text. Oh, okay, yeah, got it, got it, got it. I got it. I got it. Thanks. Okay. Okay. And can we change the size size of the uh, shape which you have inserted in the Excel? uh in the sense you know not using macros in the after creating the shape can we resize it yeah in the excel you can you can okay. you can resize it and if i do so will that get updated in macros no see okay. macro okay. is yeah. that in that case you know we can give any size and we can resize it in excel is what uh, i understood yes yes you're right so okay. macros don't thank update you. automatically whatever you provide in the macro it just gets executed here just gets executed sure, here. Sure, sure. thank you yeah. anyone else do you have any other doubts thank you. yes students do you have any other doubts? Or shall we proceed? No, Dilia. Yeah. No. Yeah. You can go ahead. Okay. Okay. So the next one is an important topic, and it is a little theoretical in the beginning. So I need uh, more patience from your side. So it is more of concepts that I'm going to explain. And then we'll see uh, how to use it probably in the next session or if it is possible in the same session, we'll see that. So I'll be explaining you about the data types and variables. Why we need this, what is their importance and uh, what are the different types of that. All that will be discussed today exhaustively. So as and when I complete the topic, so I'll I'll ask you questions like I'll allow you to ask questions too. So yes, and same mod data type and variable. Just uh, give me a second, guys. I'll switch on the charger. Yes, I'm back. See, data types are those, uh, see, whatever you printed in these um, sheets as of now with all the simple macros that we saw, you tried printing, you changed the color of the cells and shapes and all those things. You saw a lot of uh, basic programs. We also used input box and message box here. But in all these programs, we never discussed about the type of data being stored in the memory location. So what kind of data is, is uh, we are printing it uh, in the cell, whether it's text or number or date. So we haven't discussed about it. So this data types take care about it. 
so there are two types of data types so let me show you that i'll share the screen to you are you able to see this uh, yes okay so we'll be discussing you know all these topics today so this is about it data types and variables so i'll start off with it what is a data type as i said we we are going to categorize the data into different types and uh, so it is done to utilize the memory space in a better way so when i say utilizing the memory space see whenever you write a program so there is some amount of memory kept aside to execute the programs to store the data that you have provided so all these things are kept separately so if it is not managed properly your macros will run slow or uh, even it might uh, sometimes crash your file due to improper memory assignment so there are two types of data types and we are classifying it like this data types for values and data types for objects we'll discuss this in detail see these values will concentrate on things like uh, whether it's a number text date or true or false value so if it is a number so what range of number whether it's a big number whole number decimal number so we'll discuss all those things and if it is for objects please mute yourself all of you Please mute yourself, all of you. Okay. So we'll see what are data types for values. I'll show you that. See, this is actually showing you what is the importance of data types. I'll come back to this later. See, these are different types these are for values data types for values and in that we have numeric data type and non-numeric data type so all these data types that you are seeing currently byte integer long single double currency and decimal all these are numeric data types they are going to store only numbers in them and the range of values that it can store is specified I'll be sharing these files with you, but still. Uh, and how much memory is used in the computer is also mentioned. So what amount of memory is consumed when you are using these is also going to appear. See over here, uh, so most commonly used data types I'll show you, that is integer, long, double. And uh, see double is capable of storing even the decimal values like this so bigger than that you have to choose decimal but uh, depending on the data type that you choose the memory the size of the memory is also decided so you need to be very careful here okay so you just can't randomly give some data type name and use it so byte is used whenever you have a value between 0 to 100 so 0 to 255 if your value is within that range you can use byte so integer has a, has got a little bigger range so if you have a large number than this you will go for integer so then long so everything is arranged in the size size wise what's the size it is going to consume so we have arranged it in the ascending order of that next is non numeric data type so if i am trying to store a value which is non numeric then we are going to use string boolean date so any embedded object variant so again in variant you have a numeric and text that you can store so i'll say what is this 
the string can be used for any length of uh, so the characters that can be printed so when i say string don't assume it is only for alphabets it can be for symbols numbers anything that you can print all those are considered as string only so the only difference is if you are trying to store a number within a string type uh, then you cannot perform any calculation with those numbers boolean is a special type value which can store only true or false zero one or any zero or any positive number zero is considered as false and any positive number as a true value so this particular data type is used to store only such values and date is also a special data type which is used only for the date and time purpose and the object see this data type is for any embedded object we we just uh, mention it as an object in the data type and variant see uh, i'll tell you when this occurs variant is one of the largest memory occupying uh, data types i can see so you can see that 22 bytes and 16 bytes see if you don't declare a variable with a proper data type all those are considered as variant types and it can it can store almost all kinds of values text date number everything so but uh, you need to be careful again if all your variables that you have used will become variant then you will have no memory to run your macro or uh, your macros will run out of memory so it will uh, not execute so it will slow down and there are some data types which can be used by identity they have their identity identifier type character so for integer you might use percentage for long you have ampersand symbol and uh, we'll be using this in our declaration if we want to go by these kind of data types so we'll see i'll i'll show you when we are uh, you know using the declaration of variable how to declare it and how to use them again it's not compulsory you can always go by the data type name itself that's much easier to understand but you also have an identifier type character to declare it so that's the advantage of these things and uh, boolean byte char date and object don't have an identifier type that's mentioned here so you can go in detail for all these data types so i'll be showing you with the example so why do we have to use this let me explain you that so this is the reason why we have to use the data types it will ensure the validity of your data it will help you execute your programs faster and better memory utilization. So, how the validity of your data is ensured? Now, let's say you want only numerical data as an input within your program and you are using a variable to store that and you will use and you will mention the data type as let's say integer or byte. Then, it will allow only numbers in it it doesn't allow someone to enter text or some other value which doesn't fit into that data type so that's how it will ensure the validity of your data so without these data types you could enter anything within the you know memory location like a cell so we are intending to enter only a specific type of data so that's where this data types play an important role and how the programs ex executes faster i told you so depending on what range of value you are trying to store whether it's a number or not a number numeric or non-numeric you will choose specific data type only and you are ensuring uh, you know optimal use of memory space thereby increasing the speed of your programs because you know only what amount of memory is required to store that particular data type you are not wasting any memory here so all that memory that you have saved 
can be used in running your program. Any questions on the data types? No? Are you able to hear me? Uh, no, no questions. OK. The next we'll see variables then. So variables are also known as stored memory locations or named memory location. I'm sorry. So there is a memory location and you want to call it by a name or uh, refer to it by a name. Then all those are known as variables. And its name variable itself you know, says that its actual value can keep changing. Variable means it, it is always varying. That's the meaning of it. So a variable's value can actually change while running the code. So we will be using these variables in our programs so that whenever we have different values to be used multiple times, then these variables comes, come for us to rescue. So they are stored in memory, as I said. The values are stored in memory and we'll be referring to that memory location by the name of those variables. It's just like, uh, see, we all are people, but we, we are identified by our name. These variables are also the same manner. So either um, you get, you see here, the name is given to identify the value stored in the memory. And you can fetch it by its name, as I said. And uh, it can be used for execution of macros as well. See, I'll tell you the advantage. See, let me write a program over here and you will understand it. Now, I take two numbers to add or perform some operation. Let's say I'll use. values these two numbers using a macro i would like to add them and display the result over here so I'll, i'm writing a small macro for that macro to add numbers is the font okay should, should i increase the font Uh, yes, font should be a bit more bigger. Yeah. Yes. I guess now it is visible. So to add these two numbers, I'll have to take the address of these cells. So C2 and C3. That is located in sheet one. I'm going to use that over here. See, I want to change sheet sheet one C three value range of C three dot value to addition of C one and C two. See here, I'm not. I don't know what is stored in sheet C1 and C2. It might change as well. But uh, this is where the importance of variables and data types come into picture. So let me show you here. There's a range. And I use C1. Value of C1 cell needs to be added with C2. And it should be displayed in C3. That's the reason I'm writing this. So range of C2 dot value. So after writing this, I'll execute it. You'll be able to see here. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me execute it again. You 
you can see the result over here in this cell. But what if I gave some text value over here and this as a number? You will not know because it's directly we are using the address of that cell over here. We, are, we do not know what is stored in it. So these are fine with small calculations like addition and subtraction. What we have some complex programs written based on the cell values that we have received from the user. So that is when we, we are going to use variables and data types. See, it will give us an error. So if I know what type of value is present in that cell, I will be much careful in you know, how I am operating. Uh, I am uh, writing it in the macro or how I am using it in the code. I will be very careful with that. If I know which cell has got what value. This is giving me the exact address of that cell. But I would like to know what is it. Whether it is uh, my salary or it's, it's my name that I am printing over there. Or it is the age or email. So what type of value is being stored there. So for that we are going to use these things so let me show you the syntax of declaring a variable i'll show you that syntax to declare variable Syntax is a format. I can say it's a format to be used whenever you are declaring any variable. And you have some do's and don'ts as well. I'll be explaining that as uh, to you. So you will start with a keyword dim. You're going to begin with dim. Dim can be considered as dimension or declare in module. This is the keyword that you use whenever you want to declare a variable. Just like you begin with sub bar function when beginning a macro, you are going to use dim as the keyword to begin with the declaration of any variable. So after this, you are going to provide the name of the variable. So you will say variable name as data type. So what data type that you want to provide? This is the syntax of declaring any variable. Okay, let me show you an example. How to use a variable here. Dim. So this has to be given within the macro. So there are uh, different places in which you can declare the variables. I'll explain to you what is their scope and how it is different. So there are uh, three different levels of declaring these variables they are known as scope of variables what's the scope of your variable depending on where it is declared so i'm showing you the most commonly used one this is known as a local variable or procedure level or macro level variable the one that i'm showing you now is a local variable or procedure or macro level variable it's called like that so I'll show you this add demo and see dim and start with dim and provide a name. There are certain rules to provide the name to any variable. It is same as your uh, the rules that are applied for your macro name as well. It has to begin with an alphabet, no special characters other than underscore. You can use numbers, but it should be followed by text. And no VBA keyword can be used as your variable names. So to avoid uh, you know, clashes or ambig ambiguation of uh, keywords with your variable names or macro names, it is not allowed for the keywords to be used there. I'll show you that. I'll say I'll declare a variable of, let's say, um, integer type. So I'll say int var as integer. 
So over here, the range of integer is from minus 32,768 to plus 32,767. So, so the most of the variables that you use, so you, you will have to remember that range. It's good if you can be able to remember the range. So with the most commonly used variables, because uh, you will know what type of value you can provide to it. So I'll show you here. So once you declare a variable, you have to assign a value to it to see what can be stored in it. So to assign a variable, you will first give the name of the variable and you say equal to. This equal to symbol is used to assign. You can assign a value from the Excel sheet or using an input box or even directly within the macro. So I am giving it directly. I'll use a value 3500. It's a number, so you need not use any quotes here. If at all you are giving a text input, you should use double quotes. Since it's an integer type that I'm using, it only accepts numbers to it, no strings or no text. So I'll, I'll, I want to again display this whatever I've stored in into our, let's say, I'll use message box here. See within the prompt, I'll use the variable name into our. You have to observe something here. I have not used quotes to it. If at all you are using quotes with the variable name, it becomes a text. And whatever you are provided within double quotes, the same thing is printed. I don't want int var to be printed in the message box. I would like to see the value stored in that variable. So let me execute it. You see, you can see the value stored in the int var variable. So this is how you declare a variable using dim keyword and this is the assignment part. This is how you assign values to it and you can use it throughout your macro. Within this macro, you can keep using the name of this variable. So wherever you use the name of this variable, uh, in that place, this value is substituted. So now if I want to get 10% or let's say into 100 of this int var, I'll be able to get it. So overflow because it is exceeding the value of that variable. Mm. Okay, let me get 2. Yes. Can you see that now? You can perform such operations. So wherever you use int where its value, its stored value is substituted instead of that variable name. It's just a label to this value. Int where is a label that I'm using. Is it clear to all of you? If you have any questions, you can ask me. Uh, but yeah, uh, as you stored the int var is the three three thousand three thousand five hundred. In the same type, in the same type, can we store the formulas also? You can. <clears throat> okay. You can store a value uh, no, by giving an expression as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. See the same thing. Uh, what we did in the message box, I can give the same expression over here as well, like this. But you should make sure it still falls in the same range of this data type. If it is exceeding, you saw what uh, error we get. So it will show you an overflow error. If we are giving a value more than what that type of variable can store, it, will, it is going to throw an error to you. So you can uh, store 3500 into 2 
directly into Intware as well. So now if I execute it, you can see 7000. So is there any other doubt? Quickly, we have more topics to cover. Uh, what, what is the real time? What is the real time application of this interwire? Uh, this particular macro which you have written. Uh, real time application of this we'll be seeing in the further programs. Uh, I I'm just uh, showing you how to use it in the beginning. We'll uh, we'll be using it in the complex programs that we are going to learn in the further classes. So then you will use how it is, and then you will see how helpful it would be to use it. Thanks. Okay. See, I can give you another example over here how it can be helpful. Now, suppose I have a value, let's say 50,000. Is Sandeep here? Yes, tell me, Sandeep. Okay. Yes, you can go go ahead with your doubt. Hello. Oh, see, I have a value. Let's say fifty thousand. Let's say this is someone's salary, whose name is ABC. I have the salary stored over here. See, instead of me using the cell address directly within the macro and in any other calculation that i'm going to perform on that number i can use a variable name store it and use that name everywhere instead of the cell address that's the uh, use of it and i'll show you here so use variable So here I will declare a variable int salary. Let's say salary is a larger value that, that I cannot store in integer. So I should be using double or long for it. I'll use long here. Let's say LNG salary. LNG is just a prefix which indicates it's a long type variable. So after giving the prefix, you can give the name of the variable. So these are just good practices to follow and try to give meaningful names as far as possible while you're using the variables so that you will know what is it used for, uh, what that what value is stored in it to indicate that uh, we, we should be using some meaningful names like this. So I know I want to store a value of salary. So I am naming that variable as salary and I am assigning a data type of long to it because the value stored is 50,000. I can't use integer or byte here. And I'll assign this variable a value stored in sheet that is present here. So whatever is stored in this cell, I want to refer to it as LNG salary. So now I'll assign the address of that cell to this sheet one range of I have to provide the cell address, its value, whatever value is stored in that cell, that will be referred to as salary for me. So I'll give the address of the cell. It is B6, sheet 1. See now I can use this for many things like, uh, you know, let's say, calculate. some incentive that I want to give to this person. So for incentive again, I can give another variable, Tim. So again, LNG incentive, or uh, I want to store a decimal value. So I will take double, double incentive as double. So whenever you want to store a decimal value, you either go for double or decimal. Decimal has a bigger capacity than double. So I'm going with double here. 
and say PBL incentive is equal to LNG salary into let's say 0.1. So you can't use percentage in your VBA macros. I was telling you of the identifier types that you can use while declaring the variables. So identifier characters in that percentage means and it's an integer type. So but uh, if I have to use 10% here, I can't type 10%. Rather, I would use it as 0.1. It is same as 10%. So I want to calculate this and I want to deduct something. Let's say deduct the loan. So deduct loan. So let's say this person has taken a loan on his uh, from his organization. It can be deducted from his salary as well. So this should be again Tim. I'll declare it as INT EMI. It's an EMI that I'm deducting from this, this thing. So I'll, I'm declaring it as an integer type variable over here. So I'll say, sorry, int EMI equals so incentive plus salary minus these two together i want to subtract from these two together So whatever is his income, I'm going to deduct, mm, let's say, I'm sorry, the EMI should be a fixed amount. Mm, let's say I'm deducting around 15,000 from his, uh, this thing. So I want to display the total income of this person. I'll just say message box. So here I'll give this expression of incentive plus salary minus EMI. So now when I run this, let me give me this expression. You could also display something like this. Uh, to be more clear, I'll give few more message box expressions. Message box. So what is his salary? Let's say salary. I'll give the text. And along with this text, I would like to display the number that is told. Another message box displaying is incentive, let's say. And over here, I can mention it as BBL incentive. And for this, I can say total income. This ampersand symbol is used to concatenate the values. See, along with this number, I would like to see this text. So this uh, ampersand symbol is used in order to concatenate the values. So if I run this now, you can check salary is 50,000, incentive 5,000, total income 40,000. So understood. And if I change the salary over here, now I'll change this to let's say 35,000. And I'll again execute the macro. It still holds good. It still holds good. So if at all I had given these values manually like this, it, it doesn't serve the purpose. 
see now i i can uh, you know use this location whatever value i provide in b6 that is referred to as salary and all these expressions that i have given will hold good even after i change the value that's the use of these variables and data types you can see now so is it clear sabu so how we can use these variables for our purpose yeah absolutely thank you very much very well explained okay so anyone has any other doubts uh, regarding these variables and data types so i'm yet to complete it but still at this point of time if you have any doubts you can ask me questions uh, we'll move forward to scope of variables later no questions okay so there is something known as scope of variables See, that will decide for how long a variable can hold the value assigned to it that is known as the scope of a variable so as i said these variables are known as local variables or macro level or procedure level variables so whatever value you assign to them it will it, it, these the value that you assign to them will be stored as long as the code is executed once the code is executed the value assigned to them will be drawn back whatever memory was assigned to it will be fetched back from the it will be revoked from it but what if i want to use these variables in other macros as well within the same module within the same module i am writing many different macros in all those macros i want to utilize them let's say then i am i have to declare a private uh, you know i have to declare a variable with the keyword private so this space is known as global declaration space where you are going to give the declaration of the variables all variables other than local variables are declared outside the macro so whatever is declared in the global declaration space with uh, the keyword private or public or global they are not local variables so their scope is different and we telling you how it will work with an example so that uh, you will understand it better so here i'll say private and i'll declare a variable let's say int occurrence so how many times it occurred i just want to take count of it let's say as integer this is one variable so if you are using a variable of public type let's say public int i am again using an integer type variable over here so here i can uh, instead of this i'll use a string type str name let's say name as string see the scope of these two variables are different from the local variable that we discussed currently these two are declared outside any macro and they they are capable of storing the value even after this uh, execution of this code from i mean to say within this macro once i execute this macro let's say and i'm using these variables over there i can still use it in the other macros so let me show you with the example you will understand it better so we used the macro here to show you how the variables are declared in this i am going to use this let's say int occurrence we did not declare it again you can just say int occurrence 
is equal to int occurrence or let's say and give and give a value here let's say 10 and i'm using that here let's message box in the occurrence see i have not declared it but i am directly using it because i have declared it in the global declaration space i can use this int occurrence variable within this module in any number of macros that i want but if i have to use it in some different module that is not possible it's uh, since it is a module level variable i can use it only within this module not outside this module so let me show you first of all you should run the macro that is uh, allowing you to assign a value to this variable i am executing this one so this int occurrence will be storing 10 as the value now how do we know that if it has stored 10 it should work in the next macro that i am going to execute you see i'll execute this one see 10 is displayed i stored 10 to int occurrence variable in the first macro but i am again using the same variable in the next macro and it still works because its scope has uh, is more than the local variable that we used previously these local variables that we have used they hold value only until this code is executed later it will vanish so then there will be no uh, value stored in them i can't use them in a different macro it will throw me an error or it doesn't store any value because its scope is over if i have declared it at the module level using private keyword i can use it in any number of macros within the same module but uh, let let me use another variable that we have declared it as public now i am again using that in these two macros so let's say name str name say i pass this is a string string so it will accept text values to it so i'll give this and again in the next macro i am going to write the next macro in a different module not in this module or i'll insert a new module and show it to you so public where i'll just name the terms that So here I'll write another macro served do concat. Let's see. So whatever is stored in str name to that, I want to concatenate. Let's say a branch name. I'll give hyphen. This is one of the branch name. And I would like to mention the city as well. So now I'll have to first run the macro where the, the value to this str name is assigned. Only after that I have to run this macro. So the first initiation should happen. Otherwise, uh, you know, this, this won't work. Only this will be stored in it, which is not right. So I'll go back to our previous module. So here I have given a value to that public variable where str name is itas. I'll run this. I have the variables assigned. So after running that macro, I'll run this. Yeah, it is assigned, but I to see the result, I need message box now i'll say yes they are me i'll execute it you can see here. i ran it thrice so it has concatenated so many times so that is 
scope of variables where you declare and with what type of keyword you declare it all depends on that so what will be the scope of that variable will be dependent on the keyword and the place where you declare it do you have any doubts in this any one of you No, no doubts. Are you all clear with it? Because in the further uh, macros that you're going to learn, these, these things are going to be used uh, regularly. So I want you to be clear with it. If you, have, if you have no doubts, you just confirm me, any one or two of you, and then we'll move further. I have two more types of variables to show you. Are you all able to hear me? Uh, yeah, we are able to hear you. Uh, no doubts, Ramya? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, this is the first time I'm going through all these things. I think one second I'll be seeing the uh, the video and I'll understand one by one. Maybe tomorrow when we start, we'll have the questions to ask you. Okay, okay. Sure, sure, Ramya. You all are free to, you know, um, post questions to us. If you have any doubts which, you know, cannot be cleared within the online class, you can definitely, you know, post it through mail. And we'll be answering through that. So, yes. So, next we have another two variables known as static variable and constant variable. So, those are again special types of variables. I'll show you that with our next program that I'm going to do here. So use static. And here I'll declare a variable with static keyword. See this variable which is uh, going to be declared as static can store its value even after the code has executed see as, as i told the local variables are not capable of storing the values after the code execution they you know they hello yeah are you all able to hear me yeah, yes, yes. Okay. There was a long beep. I could not hear anything. Fine. See the static keyword. If you declare a variable with static keyword, it will be capable of storing the value even after the execution of the code. And I'll just show you that. I'll use int var here as integer. And I'll assign some value to it. Yes. Okay. And in the same thing, I'll declare another variable, just like a local variable. I'll use this int var2 as integer again. So to both of these, I'm going to assign values. Int var is equal to int var plus y. And int var 2, or uh, let me just name it as int local so that you will understand it uh, you know, without any confusion. I'll name them as local. So here I'll say int local plus y and I'm going to use these two variables message box and display their values to you. 
okay, I want static variable value to be displayed. And to this, I'll use int var. I'll use another message box to display the local variable value. And to this, I'll concatenate int local. So now you just check. I'll run this program multiple times. And you see how it works. So when I run this, first time static variable is 5, local variable is also 5. Okay, I'll run it for the second time. Now the static variable has become 10 because previously, see, initially there won't be any value assigned to it. So it will be 0. 0 plus 5 will be 5. So it will display 5 to you. The next time again, 5 plus 5, it will display as 10. But that's not the same with local variable. So it will show you 5 only. So any number of times you run it, local variable displays the same value. But the static variable keeps changing because it can retain the value even after the code execution. This is an exceptional uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, variable, static variable. You need not declare them somewhere in the global declaration space. You can still declare it within the macro and retain its value so that every time you run the macro, the value has uh, you know stored in it. So you can use these static variables to know how many times the user has tried to log in or how many times this macro was used. Or so something like that in your application, if you're developing a tool to log in, let's say you have some login application, you will be able to know how many times the user has used it. So you can set uh, a threshold like five attempts or three attempts. So you can use the static variable for such things. So when I run it, you see, this will increase, static variable value will increase, but the local variable value remains the same. So clear with it, all of you. Excuse me. Yes, my dear, yes. Okay. Uh, when I am asking you, someone like, uh, you know, whether you have understood or not, just tell me yes or no, so that uh, I'm sure you all are able to uh, so that i will be sure that you all are uh, able to hear me the second thing it's just a prompt for me to go further okay yeah. macro to show use of so next we'll see what are constant variables See, this constant variable is for a fixed value. You can use it in the global declaration space and the same value you can use it throughout. Uh, there are some, you know, there are a lot of constants in, constants in math, but I'm sure you all are familiar with pi. Pi is a constant value. Now, if I am using it regularly in my macros, in my calculation, in some engineering calculation or something like that, I can store that particular variable as a constant in the global declaration space and I can use it anywhere I want because it is a constant type. So I'll do that now. So over here I'll declare another variable known as so you have to use C O N S T as the keyword to declare a constant variable type. So I'll say DBL double pi i'm storing a pi value as double and say equal to 3.142 so this is the pi constant you can give the value of that constant right here after the declaration of that constant variable 
and I can use this variable as a label to this value. So instead of me saying 3.142, I can just say dbl pi, dbl pi everywhere that I want. So anywhere within this um, modular uh, project, let's say. So let me show you that macro to use constant variable value. So I'll say sub get circle area. So we all know it is used in finding out the area of the circle. I'll just say dim radius or I'll just say int or byte r byte is for uh, you know values between 0 to 255 i'll just use r here byte r as byte and dim area i would like to get the area so area is a little bigger number it could be in decimals also so i'll say double area as double and over here I will get another variable to sorry I will use this dbl area equals double pi into r into r pi r square so you can use this so for uh, radius i have to set a value so you can use an input box so that every time you run a macro uh, you can uh, give different radius or you could also give a static value some uh, same value or you can change it in the program as well so i'll say this is right r right okay so here I'll assign the value to this radius variable. I'll give 10, let's say. Now I want to see the area, output of this area, dbl area. So this should be displayed using a sage box. So let me run this. You can see that here, 314.2. So 3.142 into 100 because 10 into 10 is 100 it will give you this value. So you can say this is area of the circle. And you can display this over here. I'm just giving a very simple example which is a generalized one. You can use this constant for any kind of value that you want to store so it could be some threshold value on your quality so saying that it your errors should not go beyond this it's a constant value you can declare it as a constant or uh, if it is some number let's say a gst number you are uh, cre creating a tool in vba to you know just uh, prepare the invoices the GST number is constant, you can use that over there as constant string because it's a combination of so these uh, text and number. So you can use it for so many instances. I gave one of the examples which are very common and easily understandable. So you all understood how it is useful. Any doubts in uh, you know using this constant variable? Yes or no? No, ma'am. Okay. Okay, good. So there is one last thing that I will uh, explain it over here. So you'll say from home, I'll use this option explicit. There is a word known as option explicit. 
mentioned in every module. If it is not there, you could type it manually. The, the use of this option explicit is it will force you to declare a variable. If a variable is not declared and you are directly using it in the program, there are a lot of uh, things that happens. As I told, if you are uh, you know not declaring a variable properly, you could still use it in the program. But there are a lot of errors that could happen. And uh, if you misspell the variables, there is no notification on the on such things. To get all that, you need to use option explicit. Let me show you by writing a program without using option explicit. I'll show you what happens. So this will uh, not throw us any error, but it doesn't give us the intended value as well. So I'll say macro to show importance of option explicit. I'm not using it. I've disabled it now by giving a comment. Now option explicit is not there in this module. I am going to write a macro without the option explicit or present in the module. I'll say display age. Some uh, very simple macro. I'll say dim age. I'll say b y t or b t age as byte because it's within 0 to 255. I'll use it. So now I'll assign value to bth. And I'll give, let's say, 57, some age value. And I want to display this in the message box. And say, age is. And I want to concatenate. While giving here, I'll change the name of the variable. You see, you can see here, I have used it as BTH. I have declared BTH and I have given byte age over here. Now let me run this. It doesn't display me any value. The reason BTH and this, see, this and this are treated as two different variables. And byte age is not storing any value at all. We have not assigned any value to it. That's the reason it doesn't display. So did you see any errors here? It, it will not throw any error because it is considering it as different variables. So these are the problems that you might face if you don't use option explicit. So it is fine you have written a three line macro, you are able to find it out. But what if you are doing such things in a very big project? You can't sit and keep searching for the spelling mistakes that you have done. So it is always better to use option explicit to avoid such things. So now let me go and enable option explicit and again run this macro and then you'll see the difference. Now when enabled option explicit and go back to the macro we wrote now. Now if I run this, it will immediately throw me an error prompting me to declare it first. Variable not defined. So now I know whether I have not declared it or it could be a misspell. I know there is a spelling mistake. I'll just correct it and the macro will run fine. So now I'll be able to see the value. So by using option explicit, you will be avoiding such mistakes. Second, it will ensure your memory is utilized properly because uh, you will have to provide the proper data type, variable name and all such things when you are declaring a variable. So it is ensuring there is me proper memory utilization and there is no misspells of uh, your variables. So all smooth running of your program. So that's the advantage of using option explicit. So do you have any doubts here? I'll show you how to get that option explicit automatically. You will have to go to tools. You should go to options. And you will get 
you will get this code settings. So over here you have this require variable declaration. So you just enable this and click on OK. So currently you will not see anything in your module. So whenever you insert a new module and just say insert another module, you will be able to see option explicit automatically without typing anything. So it will appear automatically. Clear? Are you clear with this? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So I'll end the session here today. So I'm sorry we had to do another few things, but uh, it's it's okay. So tomorrow onwards I'll try uh, you know logging into the application by ten itself. I tried uh, you know logging in by. Then uh, 9.45, but uh, didn't help. So let's see you know, things, how things will be helpful.